First class, first rate. Sir Handel was cross. The coaches had bumped him off the line and he sat brooding while the workmen inspected him. Blasted things, he grumbled. Where do they get off pulling such tomfoolery? On an engine like me, no less. It's your own fault, scolded Peter Sam. If we hadn't worked together before, I'd never have guessed you were once an express engine. You treat those coaches deplorably. As he puffed slowly away, he added, Grandpuff wouldn't be pleased, under his breath. Sir Handel silently looked at his buffers, contemplating. The coaches were contemplating too. After they'd bumped Sir Handel, the fat controller had spoken severely to them. We cannot put our passengers at risk, he rumbled. You will not leave this shed until you've learned sense. Unfortunately, sense didn't come quickly to first-class carriages, especially in the absence of Scarlowy. It was his fault, they moaned. Why should we be sidelined for it? Tee-hee-hee-hee, tittered the other coaches. The summer sun brought many visitors to the railway. Peter Sam became used to collecting the open coaches and trundling off to the station. The passengers would crowd inside and they'd have a lovely journey up to the lake. First rate, first rate, giggled the open coaches. They were often looked down upon by the other coaches and relished the attention they were receiving. One day, Henry arrived with the first train. Take care, youngster. He advised. Driver says there's bad weather due. I'm not falling for your tricks again, scowled Peter Sam. There's not a cloud in the sky. The sun shone brightly as they ventured up the line. On the return journey, the sky turned grey. Wind and rain buffeted the train, but Peter Sam pushed on. Mercifully, the rain had stopped by the time they reached the station, but the passengers and coaches were soaked. Not a cloud in the sky, eh? chuckled Henry. Peter Sam didn't reply. Rain had blown into his firebox, and he felt weak. Oh, poor seats! shivered the coaches. Sir Handel was in the yard when his driver ran over. The next train is due soon, but Peter Sam's fire needs rebuilding, and the coaches are drenched. We'll fetch the others and take the train ourselves. Sir Handel was glad to be free of the trucks, but not to be pulling the snooty coaches again. He found them grimacing in the darkness of the shed. Come on, he said, we can't let the visitors down. We're first-class passenger carriages. Tourists belong in those open coaches, they sniffed. There'll be no passengers of any kind if you don't come along, snarled Sir Handel. Although, if you fancy becoming beechets or chicken coops, you're welcome to stay here. The coaches gasped. Without any further protesting, they followed Sir Handel quickly to the station. First class, first class, they muttered under their breaths as the tourists climbed aboard. Come along, dears, come along, dears, come along, dears, said Sir Handel, trying his best to sound like Scarlowy. The sun parted the clouds as they ventured up the line. The tourists were thrilled, their cameras flashed, and they marvelled at the beauty of the line. The coaches couldn't stay cross. It was lovely to be out of the shed again. Sir Handel pulled them smoothly to the top station and back. Upon their return, the tourists smiled and cheered. We didn't think we'd have a train ride today, they said, but you gave us a splendid ride, with such comfortable coaches too. The coaches blushed. When the passengers had gone, Sir Handel pushed them back to the shed. So, he smiled, 
didn't mind your temporary status as any class coaches, did you? Not at all, they beamed. It was a lovely journey. We're sorry we bumped you. I'm sorry too, replied Sir Handel. You're far from the cattle trucks I thought you were. Now, get some rest. I'm sure we'll all be out again tomorrow. As Sir Handel backed away, the coaches dozed happily in the evening sun. Yes, they thought. Tomorrow sounded lovely indeed. <laughs>